Hey travelers, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got something super exciting for you. We're diving into an epic five day adventure in Shanghai. You won't believe all the stuff you can see, do, and eat in just five days. Stick around till the end of the video cause we've got some killer tips and hidden gems that you won't want to miss. Trust me, this itinerary is your ticket to experiencing Shanghai like a local. So buckle up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, and let's get this Shanghai adventure rolling. Day 1 – The Bund Oriental Pearl TV Tower – Lujiazui Today we're kicking off day 1 of our epic 5-day adventure in Shanghai. So grab your backpack, charge up your phone for tons of selfies, and let's get going. Morning – The Bund Vibes Alright, so first stop after breakfast is this iconic spot called The Bund. You seriously can't say you've been to Shanghai without checking this place out. Picture this. You're walking along the sweet riverbank with epic views of Huangpu River on one side and the Pudong District skyscrapers on the other. Cool, right? This is where you want to bring your camera for some Instagram-worthy shots. And if you're a sunset or nighttime kind of person, come back in the evening. Those buildings light up like a Christmas tree, and the view is just crazy beautiful. Afternoon, sky high at the Oriental Pearl Tower. Alright, after you're done soaking in the views, it's time to literally go up in the world. Next stop is the Oriental Pearl Tower. This thing looks like a bunch of disco balls stacked on top of each other, and it's massive. It stands at 468 meters high. You can go up to a couple of different observation decks, one at 263 meters, and the other one's even higher at 350 meters. So, you'll get a killer look at the entire city. Oh, and if you're feeling fancy, they've got a spinning restaurant up there too. How cool is that? Evening. Lights and Heights at Lujiazui But hey, we're not done yet. As the sun sets, let's head over to the Lujiazui Riverfront. This place used to be all rice fields, can you believe it? Now it's packed with skyscrapers including China's tallest, the Shanghai Tower, towering over us at 632 meters. While you're here, you could also check out a few other awesome places like the Shanghai Ocean Aquarium if you want to see some cool underwater creatures, the Shanghai World Financial Center, if you're into that kind of stuff. And don't forget Century Square, another chill place to hang. Alright, that wraps up Day 1. Day 2 – People's Square, Old Town Today is Day 2 of our awesome 5 day trip in Shanghai, and trust me, you won't want to miss this one. If you're a young traveler looking to explore the real vibe of Shanghai, grab your backpack and let's hit the road. First stop is People's Square, right smack in the middle of Shanghai. This place is not just a square, it's the beating heart of the city. Plus, it's where East Nanjing Road begins, which is this massive walking street where you can shop till you drop. Now, what's cool about this square? It changes its vibe throughout the day. You've got the City Hall, Museum of Fine Arts, Opera House, basically a bunch of insta-worthy spots all around you. And get this, if you're here on a Sunday morning, you're in for a treat. It turns into a bride market. Yeah, you heard me right. Parents actually come here to find matches for their kids. It's like Tinder, but super old school and way more public. Alright, time to fast forward to the afternoon. We're hitting the old town Shanghai. This area is like stepping into a time machine, but a really cool one. It's a maze of tiny streets or longtang. You've got red and gold roofs, typical shops selling all kinds of traditional stuff. Super great for souvenirs, by the way. Just get lost, and I promise you, you'll find something awesome around every corner. But wait, there's more. You've got to check out Huxingting Tea Pavilion. It's the oldest tea house in Shanghai, and it's in the middle of a lake. You walk through this zigzag bridge to get there. Local legend says the zigzag path keeps away evil spirits, so you can sip your tea in peace. Last but definitely not least, the City God Temple. You can't say you've been to Old Town Shanghai without checking out this place. Trust me, it's a must-see. Alright guys, that wraps up Day 2. Day 3 – Yu Yang Garden, Former French Concession First stop on our adventure, Yu Garden, right in the heart of Old Shanghai. 
Guys, this place has been around since the 16th century. Can you believe it? It's not massive or anything, but trust me, every corner is like a perfect Instagram shot waiting to happen. It's packed with cool pavilions, 20 of them to be exact. You'll feel like you're walking through a real life fairy tale. If you ask me, it's hands down the most beautiful park in Shanghai. Quick tip, you'll want to go super early to dodge those tourist crowds, because this place can get packed. Next up, we're heading over to the French Concession. Imagine walking down streets that make you feel like you're in Paris, but you're actually still in Shanghai. We're talking tree-lined streets, indie boutiques, and of course, some killer cafes and restaurants. So a little history lesson. Don't worry, I'll keep it short. The French Concession was actually run by the French from 1849 all the way to 1946. They made it a mini Paris right here in Shanghai, and even today it's got that laid-back artsy vibe. While you're there, definitely check out Fuxing Park. If you need a breather from the fast-paced life of Shanghai, this is where you want to be. It's like this little oasis where locals hang out to sing, dance, or even practice some Tai Chi. It's a great spot to just chill and soak in some local culture. Day 4. Tianzifang, Huangpu River Today, we're going to dive into the artsy streets of Tianzifang and then hop on a boat for an awesome river cruise. First up, let's get lost in Tianzifang. This place is like a real-life Pinterest board, no joke! Picture this, narrow alleys filled with unique art studios, quirky little shops, and super chill outdoor cafes. You're gonna want to snap pics left and right. But hey, it's not just about the new stuff. Tianzifang has got history too. You'll see some amazing old school houses called Shikumen that take you back to the 1930s. How cool is that? All right. Once you've had your fill of art and shopping, it's time to head to the Huangpu River. This river is like the heartbeat of Shanghai, cutting the city in two. On one side, you've got Pudong, and on the other, there's Puxi. Now, here is where the fun kicks in. River cruise time! You've got options, my friends. Want a quick trip? Go for the 30-minute cruise. Or, if you're in for the long haul, you can be out there for up to three and a half hours. But wait, there's more. As you're cruising, get ready for some jaw-dropping views. We're talking epic bridges and insane skyline shots, especially of the Bund. Trust me, your Instagram will thank you. And the cherry on top? Take the cruise when the sun goes down. Seeing Shanghai lit up at night is something you'll never forget. It's a total game changer for your China trip. Day 5, Shanghai Circus World this is no ordinary circus. You're talking a massive Golden Dome building in the Zabe district that can fit more than 1,600 people. It's not just about the size, though. The shows are next level. First up, the era intersection of time. This is not just some people flipping around. Nope, it blends acrobatic and killer special effects. The stunts are mind-blowing, like something out of a superhero movie. Showtime's at 7.30 p.m., and it's about 90 minutes of pure awesomeness. But if you're more of a weekend warrior, check out Happy Circus! This is your classic circus vibe, complete with acrobats, clowns, and yeah, even animal tricks. Perfect for a fun-filled weekend or a Chinese holiday, and it starts at 2 p.m. But hey, the fun doesn't stop there! After the circus, why not spend the afternoon visiting a nearby water town like Zhu Zha Zhao? You get to stroll through ancient bridges, check out cool canals, and snap pics of some dope old-school architecture. And if you're really into the water town scene, there's a whole bunch to explore around Shanghai. Suzhou, Chitang, Kibao, Zuzhuang. Each one's got its own flavor. They're like little slices of ancient China, but with plenty of insta-worthy spots. So after all that, circle back to Shanghai for your final night. Just soak in the vibes, the energy, and all the amazing sights the city has to offer. Accommodation in Shanghai Let's talk about where you're gonna crash. The Bund area is kinda pricier when it comes to hotels, but man, you're right in the middle of everything cool. Plus, the hotels are sick. We're talking five-star places that are all about luxury. Trust me, you'll be snapping pics for the gram like crazy. The coolest hotels Hotel Indigo Shanghai on the Bund Yo, this place is rad! 
It's not just a hotel, it's like an art gallery. You'll find some crazy cool artwork and modern furniture in the rooms. And they even throw in some Chinese flair to make it pop. Best part? They have this rooftop bar that's just killer. Sip on a cocktail and soak in that insane skyline. Fairmont Peace Hotel on the Bund Okay, so this one is kinda legendary. It's been around for over 80 years and even celebrities love it. This place oozes class, guys. If you're a jazz fan, they've got a jazz bar that's legit world class. Need to chill? Head over to their spa, the Willow Stream Spa, and just unwind. So there you have it. If you're a young traveler looking to explore Shanghai, staying near the Bund is like staying in the heart of the action. Don't forget to pack your camera, cause you're gonna wanna capture all this awesomeness. All right guys, that wraps up our ultimate five day itinerary for Shanghai. Trust me, follow this guide and your days will be jam packed with epic sights and unforgettable experiences. If you dug this video, go ahead and smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome travel tips and itineraries. Got questions or your own Shanghai hacks? Drop them in the comments below. Catch you on the next adventure. Peace out.